Good day, folks, and welcome back to Ed's Garage at Merton Hyundai. Today, the 2023 Palisade Urban. That is right, we've got the new Urban in stock. So this is the model, or trim level rather, that replaces the luxury trim in Canada. Now, right off the bat, you can see it just looks a little bit more aggressive. Now, there's a couple changes in the styling on the inside as well, which we'll go over. But let's start at the front. We're going to talk about this entire vehicle here. Going to go from the front to the back to the inside, show you all the features, everything that the stereo does, the screen does, all that great stuff. There's a lot to talk about, so buckle up. This video is going to take a while. Now, if you are interested in this model of vehicle, this video is going to be very, very helpful. If you're just kind of checking it out real quick, just keep in mind the video does get a little bit boring later on as we start going all of, over all of the features. Uh, but you know what? That's what you want when you're looking at one of these vehicles. You want to know what it comes with, right? So let's talk about this vehicle, the 2023 Palisade Urban Edition. So first off, right at the front here, you'll notice we have the beautiful dark chrome grille. So it's the same shape, but it is dark chrome, which is really cool. So instead of having that sort of lighter colored grille, uh, it's all blacked out in the front. You'll also notice the front fascia here is different as well, so a little bit more aggressive styling there. Uh, we've got the blacked out Hyundai badge, of course. Now, this particular one does have a hood deflector on it. Um, you've got the turn signals built into the grill sort of shape, which is kind of nice. You have the uh, daytime running light passing all the way through the bumper here. They actually added the little window here for the daytime running light. So on the previous version of the luxury, previous year rather, this wasn't there. It was only on the top trim. So they've added that now. You got full LED lighting system, so LED high beams and LED uh, low beams. You've got the front parking sensors on this trim level. And of course you have the forward facing radar, that's for the adaptive cruise control uh, and autonomous emergency braking. And then if you look in the windshield up here you can see we've got the forward facing camera for the pedestrian detection. Uh, lane keep assistance, that sort of thing. Coming down to the side of the vehicle, check this out. You got the really cool blacked out rims. Now, this is a new designed rim for the 2023 model year. It's wrapped in Bridgestone Duelers, so a little bit more aggressive tire uh, than the previous ones as well. If I remember correctly, they were Bridgestones, uh, but not the Duelers. If I, I can't actually recall 100%, I could be wrong on that. Now, as far as the type of tires, they are a mud and snow rated all season tire. Uh, and these are a 20 inch as well. So they're 245, 50 R20. And yeah, they look pretty badass. They are an aluminum alloy rim as well. You also notice we got some new styling cues along the bottom here. The rocker is a little bit more aggressive as well. And you got that nice black strip there. This vehicle does have the proximity entry a light that comes up in here when you approach the vehicle. And you'll notice the mirror. It's got the camera there because this does have the 360 camera system, marker lights on the outside of the mirrors for your turn signals, and the daytime running lights. Another new thing for 2023, these will actually automatically dim. So not only are they heated, powered uh, mirrors with bl blind spot monitor, etc., they've also got the auto dimming technology now as well. Still no power folding though, unfortunately that uh, the agreement with Kia prevents Hyundai from using auto or uh, folding mirrors, unfortunately, power folding mirrors. Uh, so you got the nice sort of black on the pillars here as well. This one, of course, is body color, but you got a little bit of black there flanked by some chrome strip. And of course, you got the top side rails as well. Nice floating roof line here with the back window kind of rolling around. This is also blacked out to make it kind of look like it's floating, which is pretty cool. And then coming around to the back side here, you can see again, with that aggressive styling on the rear bumper, rear fascia there, uh, twin chrome exhaust. And you can see we've got the parking sensors along the back there as well. Backup camera right there. Palisade written on the tailgate. Looks really, really nice. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to talk about back here with the exception of one thing. And that of course is the automatic smart power tailgate. So what that means is all I need to do is stand behind the vehicle and it's actually flashing and beeping right now. I don't know if you can hear the beep. There you go, the tailgate opens up all on its own. So no little dance required, uh, no button pressing, no pulling out key fobs or anything, just stand there calmly and wait for the door to open. Now that can be adjusted, so you don't actually have to have it do that. If you want, you can just make it so that it only opens when you press the button. Uh, but also notice the height of the tailgate. I'm six foot one and a half roughly, and I still have a couple inches above my head. 
Uh, but yeah, with that power tailgate, you can actually shut that whole system off. You can change how far it opens. You can change how fast it opens uh, or whether or not it's power at all. So lots of customizability in just the power tailgate. Now let's have a look at the trunk space here. So you can see we've got a fairly decent amount of space, enough for you know a couple of strollers or at least one stroller anyway, or a bunch of uh, uh, suitcases or whatnot. And we have the ability to fold down the third row simply by pressing those two buttons there. While that's folding down, you can see we've got the Harman Kardon audio system in this vehicle. So if, if I remember correctly, it's 12 speakers, 10 or 12 speakers, subwoofer from the back here, center channel up front, and a Harman Kardon system, really, really nice audio system. You got the 12 volt port here. Uh, you have the ability to quickly fold down the second row as well, simply by pressing those buttons. And I'm gonna put these back up here. You can see we've also got buttons here in case the third row passenger wants to recline the seat. So I'll show you what I mean here. Once that stops moving, I can press the button and I can actually recline the seat. And of course I do need to put up the headrest manually. All right, now this one has the premium cargo tray installed, but if I fold up the floor, you notice we got a little hook here that I can use to hook that onto the headrest bar so that it stays up for me. But we have our included privacy cover, which of course will mount into the two spots right there, depending on whether or not the second row is reclined. Uh, and it'll cover up this entire area if you have the third row down. Uh, you've also got the jack here, jack handle, and then it also comes with a free cargo net, which mounts in between these two positions here. Now, one thing I haven't done in a long time is actually gotten into the third row of the Palisade. So let's do that now, and let's see just how easy it is for somebody who's six foot two to get back there. Now, if you're a little child, you can actually press this button down here to move the seat out of the way, or if you can reach it, this one right here does the same thing. So we press that, there goes the seat. Now, it is captain's chairs in the middle on this particular trim level, um, or in this particular unit, but you can also get this trim level with a bench seat. So instead of having seven seats total, you would have eight seats total. Now kids can also kind of pass through the center here, which is another easy way of getting in, but I'm gonna go through this section here. So I'll flip the camera over and you can see, there we go, I'm in. Okay, we're gonna move this seat. Well, you know what, let's, uh, let's move it all the way back first. There it is, okay, so all the way back, you can see my feet are up against the seat breast or the seat back. However, this doesn't necessarily need to be moved all the way back. There is lots of room in the second row, which I can demonstrate in a moment here. But if I lock it in there, you can see I've actually got tons of space. And if you have a look up there, right now that back seat's all the way back because this has easy access seating. So that seat will move forwards when necessary. But I'll show you, there's quite a bit of space, quite a bit of um, ability to manipulate the position of all the seats if you have adults in the third row. All right, also you can see I've got plenty of headroom back here, um, but if I wanted to, I could actually sit a up a little bit more upright. And even with the seat more upright, I can still sit back here pretty comfortably. Uh, you'll also notice on the left-hand side here, I've got a USB uh, C port and two cup holders as well. So a good amount of space, USB C port cup holders, yeah, it's pretty comfortable. Now, in Canada, we don't get the third row heated seats, uh, which is why there's no buttons back here for the heated seats. In America, you get heated seats back here in the calligraphy trim or limited trim. Uh, not so sure about your lower trim levels, but um, yeah, in case anybody's wondering why there's no heated seat buttons back here, just can't get those in Canada in the third row for some reason. Now, while we're back here, you can also see we have the vents right here. So that's kind of nice. We have two options for the vents. You have uh, diffused air or just directed air. And you can also see we have the ultrasonic sensors. The ultrasonic sensors, basically what those do is they detect the pres presence of uh, anything living inside the vehicle. And if the vehicle is shut off and locked and it notices something moving inside the vehicle, basically it'll set off the car alarm and it'll send a message to your cell phone using Blue Link. And that's meant to prevent, uh, prevent you know, infants and, and dogs and stuff like that perishing inside of hot cars. So pretty cool technology, something that uh, was kind of a first in the industry back in 2020 when Hyundai decided to do it. So pretty neat. All right, let's move on to the second row. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've set the, the front seat up exactly where I would have it when I was driving it. As a driver, it was six foot one and a half. Now I'm gonna get into the second row and I've gone ahead and moved the second row seat all the way back, okay? So remember where it was all the way back, my, my knees were up against it and I would have to move the second row up a little bit 
uh, if I were to be sitting behind myself. However, you can see I have plenty of room to do so now. So I can move this seat up to about there, and now the third row has tons of space. So really, it's very, very actually convenient for you know multiple adults. As an adult, as a, someone who is six foot two, I don't think I'd, or six foot one and a half, I don't think I'd want to sit there for more than two or three hours. Uh, but it is 100% doable for shorter trips anyway. All right, let's look at some of the features in the back here for the second row passengers. All right, so first thing we'll look at is the door here. So with, this is really cool. I've got a retractable sunshade, which is really nice. I've got a grab handle up here. I've got a vent just like the third row. Um, on the door itself, I've got two cup holders as well here, and then a nice pocket down here that you can actually put a whole other bottle in as well. Let me just open this up so you can see what I'm talking about. So a little bottle, bottle holder there, two cup holders, uh, and then the armrest, and even a little bit of storage within the handle. The armrest is nice and cushioned as well, and the seats, as you can see here, are heated back here. So heated seats on both of the outboard seats. Automatic climate control for the third or second row passengers. Well, I guess second and third row are all kind of uh, connected to that. You got the 12 volt port there as well and USB ports in the seats and they are USB-C. So both sides have that. This is basically a USB port for every single occupant of this vehicle. And there are two cup holders for every occupant of this vehicle as well. So lots of cup holders. Um, now the seat itself is reclinable. So I can pull the handle, I can recline it down to there. Uh, and pretty much anywhere in between there and there. I can I can stop it at any position along the way. And what's really nice about the uh, the seat is that if I fold down the armrest, you'll see it goes all the way down first, and then I can actually ratchet it up wherever I want. And that way, if the seat is reclined, it's still straight, as you can see. And if it's not reclined, it's also still straight, <laughs> so you can really put that armrest exactly where you want it. Also, you'll notice the seat backs here are solid, and you have a storage compartment within there as well. And up along the headliner, you can see we've got two map lights and their LEDs flanked by that nice black, uh, piano black plastic, which up here, it's a great place for black plastic. All right, before I jump into the driver's seat, I want to show you quickly the passenger seat is power as well, and it has adjustable height and adjustable tilt, and even lower back support. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten way adjustable power passenger seat. How awesome is that? Coming over to the driver's side. So we have the uh, controls on the door, pretty straightforward. You got the uh, child safety lock mechanism, which is both for windows and doors. You have memory seating and mirrors. So that'll actually remember your seat position, your mirror position. Uh, your dashboard lighting level position and a few other things as well. Uh, mirror controls there as well. The driver's seat is also power, of course, but more adjustability. Check this out. We have thigh support, so it can actually extend the seat out, as you can see. Um, and then four-way lower back support. So it goes up and down and out and in. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen way power driver seat, and of course the headrests go up and down manually. All right, so starting on the left side of the dashboard, we have a power e-brake, which does turn itself on and off as necessary. You can't inadvertently leave it on, which is nice. The ability to open up the tailgate from here, of course, your dimmer switch, your tow hull mode, which is new for 2023. You got your stability and traction control over here. Uh, the first stock on the left, of course, you have automatic headlights, automatic high beams as well, and a really nice knurled finish on the shifter. It also has the momentary signal with the available, check this out, we're zooming in a little bit here, because you have blind view monitors. So that comes up on the left side and then on the right side when you put your right turn signal on. Super, super cool option. And of course, that is part of the 360 camera system, which we will quickly just have a look at here. So there's your 360 camera system with the backup camera, uh, dynamic steering lines, as well as dynamic steering lines on the 360 cam system. Really awesome system, guys. It is extremely high resolution. It looks fantastic and it has lots of different uh, functionality. You can even do this and look at the vehicle in real time in three dimensions. Now, obviously this isn't this vehicle because it's not white with, you know, aluminum alloy rims, but that would be impossible unless you had a drone flying overhead constantly. 
Uh, but check this out. If I put the vehicle into reverse, um, I'm going to actually show you what happens here. If I move the car now, you'll notice the wheels on the screen actually move. And if I turn the steering wheel, even the wheels on the screen move as well with the steering wheel. Now, they've done such a good job with this, it, and it looks premium. It really looks awesome. Now, if I switch back to drive, it goes to the front camera, of course, automatically. And, uh, of course, you have the, the swing of the front end as well. Uh, that's not very common. Uh, I don't think you see that on much other, uh, many other brands, but you actually have the swing of the vehicle. And even if you're in drive, you also get the uh, the side of the vehicle here showing where it's going to end up. So, you know, you're not going to run over anybody's feet or anybody's toys or whatever uh, parked beside you. Right, getting back to this area here, we have, of course, the windshield wiper washer stock. Nothing too crazy here. It's pretty standard. Uh, it's not automatic on this one. That would just be on the um, the calligraphy. Uh, the steering wheel itself, you got paddle shift, which is nice. You can shift up, shift down. On your steering wheel, you have your voice recognition. Now, it does have built-in voice recognition, which works very, very well. Uh, and you have, of course, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, question that somebody is going to ask, I'm sure, does this have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto? No, it does not, because it has built-in navigation. So currently, all Hyundai systems with built-in navigation do not have wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, as is evident by the lack of a Wi-Fi screen in here. Um, so it's just, just Bluetooth and just hardwired uh, to the USB port. Now, before you get all upset at Hyundai for not having wireless Apple CarPlay Android Auto, just know that it is actually a third-party company, third-party entity that does the software for their screens, and unfortunately they haven't actually made it work yet. Um, now, having said that, you know, it's been a couple of years at this point. I think there should have been a solution. Uh, so hopefully they come up with an answer and a solution for that quickly. So, yeah, we'll see. All right, let's move on. Uh, having a look at the instrument cluster screen. So you notice, of course, we had the uh, turn signal uh, blind view monitor come up, of course. On the steering wheel, you have options to control the center of that screen. So right now it's on the all-wheel drive info screen. And if I start to move... Uh, let me just back up a little bit here. Now, the cool thing about the all-wheel drive system in this vehicle, there you go, you can see the little blue lines kind of popping up. So no matter what you're doing, it'll always put power to all four wheels right away under any sort of uh, acceleration. And the reason for that is because they're, they're trying to mitigate the potential of it slipping. So it's not waiting for the front wheels to slip and then po putting power to the rear wheels. It's just putting power to all wheels right away. Uh, which is super cool. So it's almost a full-time all-wheel drive system, but not quite, because as you start to approach your speed, it'll taper off and just go front-wheel drive only in order to save fuel. All right, so having a look at some of the other buttons on the steering wheel here. So you've got your, uh, as I mentioned, your voice control, your volume control. This is all for the multimedia system, which is kind of nice. So none of this is for that screen. Just to keep things simple, this is just for the multimedia system. It does have a customizable button here. I usually just have that hang up phone calls for my clients. And then on the other side of the steering wheel, we have our adaptive cruise control. So that's where it maintains a distance behind the car in front of you automatically. And it also has lane follow assist. So not only does this vehicle have lane keep assist at higher speeds, it has lane follow assist at any speed from zero and up. So that's pretty nice as well. And then these two buttons here are used to control the little center screen there. So if I hit the top one, it kind of navigates through to the right. And if I hit this one here, it goes up and down through cool. them. When we adjust the drive mode, so right now we're in smart mode. If I rotate, sorry, if I rotate this little knob here and put it into sport mode, check it out. That actually changes. Pretty cool. So you got sport, eco, and comfort. So there's multiple different views for that, which is kind of neat. And if I put it into terrain mode, uh, it doesn't actually change the screen, but it does give us snow, mud, and sand. So that's going to change the all-wheel drive system uh, and how it works in those different environments, um, trying to make it a little bit more aggressive on the traction control, that sort of thing. All right, notice that there is a speed limit up here, which is pretty cool. So using the navigation system, the vehicle does know what the speed limits are for the most part on most roads. And in here, also using the controls on the steering wheel, I can show you, I got... Uh, uh, our all-wheel drive screen, which basically shows when power is being sent to each wheel. Uh, I have um, our lane keep assist and adaptive cruise information. Um, now, also in here, we have our drive info, our, our, uh, basically our trip computer uh, since we turned on the car, our trip computer since last refueling, our trip computer 
that we can set at any time and our digital speedometer, which we can change to miles just by going into the settings and adjusting it to miles. And that'll change everything in there as well. I've got our compass here, and this can also be set to show uh, turn by turn directions. And then I've got uh, this screen again, back to the tire pressure monitor and the all wheel drive system. I've got two 12 inch screens here, and uh, they are both non-polarized, which means you can see them even if you're wearing polarized sunglasses. Looking at the seats real quick, you can see uh, we do have a slightly new design. It's a little bit different than the Lecture Trim for 2022. Uh, it looks a little bit different. It's, uh, I wouldn't say it's any nicer or less nice or whatever. It, it Honestly, it's just as nice. It's just different. Uh, you got the nice white piping on the seats as well. And of course, there is the option for the light gray interior uh, on these as well, if you prefer that. Uh, you can see also we have a sunroof here. Basic headliner though, nothing crazy. Uh, it doesn't have the suede headliner like the calligraphy does. Um, up here you have some buttons for your lighting, so you got lights on when the doors are open, lights all the way on, uh, individual map lights, and then of course you have your buttons for uh, SOS, emergency, and calling for roadside assistance. That's part of Hyundai's Blue Link. Now, Blue Link is Hyundai's telematic system, which you get for free for three years in British Columbia. So, Pretty nice system. You can remote start the car, find it in a parking lot or on a Google map somewhere. You can unlock the doors, lock the doors, all from your cell phone. It also has automatic emergency services calling if you get into an accident. And of course, those two buttons as well, all free for three years. Now, after three years is up, it's between 10 to $30 a month, unless that changes by three years from now. Uh, but it's between 10 to $30 a month, depending on the services that you apply for. All right, so the center console itself, you got a, a huge storage compartment here. And uh, inside the storage compartment, you can see we've got a USB port right there and a 12 volt power outlet right there. And the really nice thing is all the USB ports are actually lit up um, in, you know, I, I believe anyway. Actually, I'm not so sure. No, sorry. These are not lit up, um, but the ones that are in darker areas are lit up. So it's easy to see them. The ones in the seats are actually really easy to see anyway. But even the one down here for the passenger, which is on this side, this one is lit up. Okay, and then of course you have a 12 volt power outlet there as well. Nice big storage area there. Or area, yeah, there we go, there's a word. Uh, we have the shift by wire transmission, auto hold so that the car doesn't move forward when you let go of the brakes. You got ventilated seats, heated seats, heated steering wheel, hill descent assist, there's your parking sensors front and rear, auto start stop for the, uh, uh, the engine shutting off when you come to a red light or whatnot. Uh, now, with the shift by wire transmission, one of the really nice features with it is that if you're wearing your seatbelt, you come to a stop, you forget to turn the car off or you forget to put it into park. If you open the door and take your seatbelt off, it quickly puts it into park for you. When you shut the car off, if you forgot to put it into park, it also quickly puts it into park for you. So really, really safe uh, shift by wire transmission. And of course, that opens up all that extra space down there. All right, looking a little bit higher, we have the dual zone automatic, three level automatic climate control. Sorry, sorry, tri zone. And it actually has the rear climate control as well. Now, the rear climate control actually pops up on the screen here, and you can actually manipulate it from the system right from the screen here. So you can actually adjust all of that, put it on automatic, and kind of let it do its thing. You'll also notice in the climate control settings, if I go to front climate, it bumps over to the front side and I can control everything from here as well. Now the Palisade, I believe might actually be the only vehicle that we have that you can actually control the climate system from here. I don't recall if any of the other cars do it, but kind of nice to see. Uh, the three zone automatic is really nice as well. So if you want to keep it on automatic, but you don't want to have the fan blasting like, a, like crazy, you can reduce the intensity of the automatic system. So that's cool. Uh, on the right side here, you can see we've got automatic uh, recirculate air upon washer fluid use, which is awesome. Auto dehumidify and auto defog. And of course you can go to the rear warmer settings and enable and disable the heated seats in the back. So because this has heated seats in the second row, you can control them from here as well. Um, so that's pretty much it with the climate control, pretty straightforward. You got all the buttons here for your stereo. I'm also gonna link the, the video that I did on the um, infotainment system uh, because it is quite in depth. Uh, I go over absolutely everything on this screen, so I'm going to link that in the description below as well. So we're going to skip that. We're going to go up to the rear view mirror. It is auto dimming. You've got three buttons for garage doors and gates. And then, of course, both of the mirrors slide and they both have, or both of the side visors, sorry, uh, have mirrors and the lights come on when you open them up. It's kind of cool. All right, so the only thing that's different in the calligraphy's center display 
is the ability to enable and disable the uh, head up display options and the ambient lights uh, display options or the ambient light options. This vehicle, this urban trend, uh, urban edition rather, does not have the head up display and it does not have the ambient light. So you won't see those settings in that center screen. Um, however, pretty much everything else in that in-depth analysis that I did is on here as well. Uh, you know, things like the, the map settings, um, the quiet mode, rear you know, all of this stuff is in that video as well. So if you want to know more about this, again, don't hesitate. Click on the link in the description below. It's a very, very in-depth video. I literally cover every single option in that screen. But that's where I'm going to end this video. Um, I know it was a little bit longer, so thank you for hanging out uh, to see the whole video. If this video helped you at all, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment below. I'm always doing my best to answer as many questions as I can. Thank you so much for watching the video, and until um, next time, have a great day.